Hi, it's Kevin Clark. Welcome to a great day. It's a privilege and honour to be serving you at such a time as this. And congratulations on the achievements so far. You've made it to part four of a five-part series entitled 101 Universal Sales Truths They Don't Want You To Know. And I've got a question for you. How do you normally start your day? I found that if I start my day by doing things like visualisation exercises or prayer meditation, looking at certain quotes, looking in the mirror, saying positive things to myself, looking at my desired outcomes for the day, I tend to get better results throughout the day. If you're not doing those type of things, I strongly urge you to give it a go. If you are, but you've come out of that space, then do whatever you need to do to get back in that space. If you know there's benefits for you there, okay? I just, I'm just saying it works for me. So, today, every door that you will walk through, expect joy in abundance, okay? Now what we're gonna do is go into these powerful universal sales truths, starting from 60, okay? Your attitude towards sales as a profession determines your selling actions. So, how you position yourself, how you present yourself, not just on the inside, but on the outside as well, is extremely important, okay? Because you're giving off signals, you're speaking, you're always communicating, directly, indirectly communicating on all different levels. We all communicate on so many different levels, so many different levels. You can get to a place of communicating where you are operating off a, f a certain frequency where you don't even need to say anything verbally to the point where you can literally just be still and think and listen and connect with other people that are on that frequency. Yeah, the foundation is love and it goes deep. So, moving on. 61. When selling, connect with your own deepest values and never settle to invest in a moment in anything less. Sixty two. Salespeople who only do what they feel like doing today are bound to spend the rest of their lives unable to do what they really feel like doing. Look at that. That reminds me of a time when I used to see cycles each five years would go by and I would have a review and say to myself, Hmm, if I would have only stuck to those things that I was truly passionate about doing I would have had five years growth in them very things if I was persistent. So there's just something about seed, time and harvest. 63. Trust produces an open mind and mistrust produces a closed mind. If you gain trust, the decision maker says, tell me how you can satisfy my needs. That's the open mind. If you achieve mistrust, the decision maker says, um, you can't satisfy my needs. <laughs> Close mind. <laughs> 64. You have to address the decision maker's emotions before you address his or her intellect. A hungry stomach cannot hear. Uh -uh. You can't hear, you must feel. <laughs> 65. When the average decision maker doesn't buy, he or she remembers fewer than 10 words spoken verbatim by the salesperson during the presentation. Look at that. Talk about closed in the mind. 66. The average decision maker spends only between 9 and 20 seconds reviewing written sales materials. The average decision maker spends only between 4 and 11 seconds reviewing a printout. 67. The typical objection is the rational justification for an emotional decision that was made long before the objection is expressed. Long before it was expressed. 68. An objection is almost always an indication that the decision maker has a closed mind. Therefore, the objection usually has nothing to do with what caused the emotional resistance. Check that one. 69. Most decision makers are more interested in the person they're buying from than in the thing they're buying. Now that's a powerful one to remember, isn't it? So that shows you about how we need to position ourselves, how we need to prepare ourselves, not within, but without also. Our outlook, our character, character comes before gifts. 
Never position yourself, your organization, or what you're selling on the basis of a feature or a benefit. Wow, you just become a feature. I am a feature. I am a benefit. <laughs> it's not the one. 71. Successful selling amounts to making the decision maker feel good and being in the room when he or she does feel good. Look at that. So when that person is at that peak, they're feeling good because they're happy about the very thing that they've been exposed to. So then it's time to keep that fire burning by giving them what they want. 72. More than 80% of all salespeople talk more than more than is necessary to secure a sale. Look at that. That shows you a lot, doesn't it? It shows you that we should be listening more than talking. Asking the right questions. 73. Goals define the way you shape your own life. 74. The two main ingredients for enthusiasm are being captivated by an ideal and a deep conviction that you can achieve it. A deep conviction that you can achieve it. You know you can, you're sure you can. 75, compete against the achievement of your sales objectives, not against the successes of others or their expectations of you. Stay in your own lane, stay focused. 76, dwell on your past sales successes, view past failures only as lessons learned. There's no such thing as failure, it's just feedback. 77, wow, I love that number so much. I've got a story about that number which I'm going to share with you at some point. I may share the story with you in part five. A selling career is a continuous series of opportunities. The way we handle those opportunities is the way we handle our career. Lovely. 78. Associate yourself with positive, successful people and you will be more positive and successful. Look at that, straight in to the law of association. 79. The secret to selling is to be in front of qualified prospects when they're ready to buy. Not when you need to make a sale. Look at that. Patience is a virtue. 80, and this is where we're gonna park. Take an organized approach to prospecting, but never at the expense of activity. So that was brilliant, wasn't it? Powerful 20 universal sales truths. Well done, you've made it to the end of that particular part. So, what I'm going to do for you is, as promised, I do this at each part. I'm going to give you free access to a product that I have. The details will be inside this page, above or below. Have a look, you find a link. It's 100% free, you can download it. There will also be a package put together that will give you direct access to this series and also a book supporting it, along with access to my mastermind group entitled Rule Your World. Powerful group, it's where people come together who are like-minded and do great things. And there's more as well. You'll be able to access that package on my e-learning portable, portal rather. It's the number one e-learning portal for self-improvement products okay so go there help yourself to the package that will be live in part five so when part five has completed i'll make sure that there will be some details so that you can get your hands on that package okay so thank you kindly for being patient congratulations once again you've invested your time you've used your time wisely do take this information and use it to the best of your ability. 
that's it from me kevin clark believing in you and remember stay focused god bless i love you okay bye